Hi, card making friends. Welcome back. It's Sandy here. And tonight we have the new collaboration from Simon Says Stamps. This is Pink Fresh Artistic Foliage. And there is a stamp set and there is also a stencil to go with this pretty little thing. So I'm going to jump right in and we're going to have some fun with it. It's a two layer stencil. There is one that fills in the entire leaf and then the second smaller one adds the highlight pieces. So basically you need a light and a dark of the colors you're going to choose. I'm going to start by heat embossing my image in gold. I'm working with a piece of hammer mill white. It's four and a quarter by five and a half and I'm just getting the stamp out. I'm going to put it over on the left hand side and pick it up with the lid of my Misty. We're going to be gold embossing this one. So I've got my Versa mark and my anti-static. Get my fingerprints out of the way. My brand new Versamark. I haven't had a new Versamark ink pad in like 12 years. It's so clean compared to my old one. All right, so I'm going to stamp this twice because once again, this is a new stamp. So it needs to be seasoned in a little bit. Pulling my magnets off and cover it with my gold embossing powder. Beautiful, beautiful leaf image. I had a lot of fun with this. Flicking off anything that is uh, not sticking where it's supposed to, and we're going to heat emboss this. I'm going to be using fall colors on this today, so this gold is really going to highlight that. And I'm playing with a new tool today. Waffle Flowers sent me this. It is a grip mat, five and a half by eight and a half, and it is awesome for stenciling because it holds everything in place for you. So I'm just removing the protective covers and I'm going to lay it down into the bottom left hand corner of my uh, stencil mat and this will kind of stop it from moving around. Wedge it in there so I can get all set up, get all the packaging out of the way. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to start with the larger of the stencils. You want to position your stencil over top of where you're going to be working. And once you get that lined up, just press those outside edges. And this grip mat really does grip everything and hold it in place. I didn't have to hold on to anything. Okay, so I'm getting my ink ready. There are eight inks I'm going to be using. For the light side, these are all from Pink Fresh. I'm using Warm Buff, Apricot, Ocean Breeze, and Coral Reef. For the darks, I'm using Doe, Persimmon, aquamarine and passion fruit. So I'm going to start with the light colors and I'm placing them just above my work and I like to put the lids right behind it so I make sure I'm using the right color. I'm using two sets of the uh, blending tools and those are the waffle flower little skinny ones that we'll be using for the second stencil. The first stencil I'm using the small blending brushes from Simon Says Stamps. Starting at the bottom and with the brown, the warm buff ink, I'm loading the bottom section of leaves and I'm going to split this basically into four because I'm using four different colors. The second color, apricot. And again, I'm working my way up to a few of the leaves. And I'm trying to blend in both directions so that I get good coverage. The third color is the light of the teal, it's ocean breeze, and that's picking up the three big leaves in the middle and then that little stem of leaves that kind of shoots off to the right. And finally, coral reef is going to be the top. So I thought this was a pretty combination of fall colors. Um, recently, I have really liked teal and pink coming into fall colors. I think they are really pretty. I'm not a huge fan of orange, so this was kind of a nice change up. Now, didn't that work nicely? Love it. Next, I switched out my colors to the darker ones. And again, that is Doe, Persimmon, Aquamarine, and Passion Fruit. I am layering my second stencil, which is the little highlight stencil, over top of the first section and pressing it down so that my grip mat gets a hold of it. Starting with Doe and the small shadow brush, or sorry, they're called shader brushes from Waffle Flowers. I'm using them to add the darker color of ink into each of 
the little leaf sections. Now I'm on to persimmon. And again, uh, for this one, because the colors are darker, I started at the bottom of the leaf and then pulled the ink up near the top, just so I didn't have a big blob anywhere. Third color, again, aquamarine. And just jabbing that all in there. The fourth color is passion fruit, which is a little bit darker pink and it's really pretty. And that's it for coloring. I'm going to remove the stencil, but I'm going to leave everything else in place because I'm going to mask a uh, border around this. Um, this is a really cool way of making the card look like it's got two or three or four layers of cardstock to it, but it's actually a flat card. These are A2 masks. They're from Simon Says Stamps. There's four in a package, so you get the cutouts. You also get the pieces that are cut out, and so what you can do is you can do a reverse mask. So I'm going to be doing this with this one, but if I wanted to, I could take the cutout piece and I could place it in there and I could do the border around the outside of the piece of plastic instead of the inside. So there I would place it there and then I would put my ink around the outside. I want the reverse of that so I'm placing the mask and you can't see it on the camera but there are uh, line up lines all the way around. They're very faint. So I'm just lining those lines up to the outside edge of my cardstock and because I'm doing this right on top of this new grip mat I just have to press it down and it's going to stay there until I'm done. I'm cleaning off some of the ink off of my stencil mat because I don't want to transfer that uh, to what I'm about to do. I'm going to use the warm buff and that's the lighter of the two browns. I'm going to use a small blending brush and I'm going to do very lightly, I'm going to put a brown border around this. So you want to tread lightly, don't push too hard on your blending brush. Um, you can always add more ink and like I always say it's pretty hard to take ink off of this once it's on. So better to do it twice than having to throw this in the bin and start over again. And this just going to leave a really really nice border around the artwork. While I was working on these I was kind of thinking that the teal might have been a pretty color for a border around this too. But I wanted to stay kind of really earthy that's why I went with the browns. And this just takes a couple of minutes, but it does give a really, really artistic feel to it. You'll see when I pull the mask off um, what it does to a card front. It looks like you've got three layers instead of just one. Okay, but wait, there's more. I'm going to do a little splatter. So I'm inking up uh, a handle, an acrylic handle, with the light brown. Uh, give it a little spritz, picking it up with my paintbrush and just flicking it all over my card front. Love this. Then I'm going to change it out and I'm going to do the same thing with the teal. I wanted two colors of splatter on this one. So clean handle, uh, light teal, again wetting it and picking it up with a paintbrush and splattering it onto the card. And now you want to let that dry. I did a second piece off camera and when I go to stamp the sentiments I am going to do uh, one in portrait and one in landscape. So we're just popping them back into the misty, lining everything up and deciding which stamps I'm going to use. And I'm stamping this one in Versifying Claire the Nocturne. It is a beautiful black. Uh, I love it. It's really easy to clean off of the stamps and it stamps first time. It's awesome ink. Highly recommend it. Okay, so we're changing over to the landscape one. I am going to take that sentiment out and pick a different one. And this one is going to go in the bottom left hand corner. And what I've done on both of them is I have lined up that masked border with the first line of the sentiment. Each of the sentiments has two lines and so one part of it is in the brown and the second part is in the bottom white section. And it looks really pretty. There we go. Okay, the final step is embellishing and I have got these beautiful glitter drops in aqua from Pink Fresh. And I'm just going to pop some into my little tray here and add them to 
the card, deciding which ones I want. I like to start with the big ones near the bottom and work my way up. And there's quite a few different sizes in this package. And so you just need to pop them in where you'd like them. I also think that odd uh, numbers look better than even numbers. So I've got five going around uh, the top large branch and I'm putting three into that bottom little branch. And I'm just going to grab my Barely Art glue because it's got that nice fine tip on it. And we're going to glue all these little puppies down. And this is, oh, this bling looks so nice. I didn't have any copper colored ones. Otherwise, I definitely would have gone with the copper colored ones. But these will do. They're quite lovely. Okay, so I've mounted these onto white card bases. Um, obviously one going each way for the landscape and the portrait. I have one more idea for you though. How about a matching envelope? So I used my Misty and I did exactly the same thing as I did on the card and I did the front plus I also did the flap on the back. I just thought it was really pretty. Now wouldn't these make beautiful wedding invitations for a fall wedding? I just I am just really taken with this set. There's so many things that you could do with it. Just changing out the sentiments to something different. Anyway, everything I've used today is listed underneath this video. There's a link over to my blog as well to get more details on the cards. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider giving me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate that. And until next time, toodles!